Good morning, and welcome family, friends, Dean Ramsey, faculty, staff, and of course, our graduates, or dare I say, colleagues, to the PA class of 2020 graduation. Thank you all for being here and supporting our graduates. I'm Carl Garuba, the director of the PA program. First, I would like to acknowledge some very special people here today. I'd like to first thank the family, friends, and loved ones for your loving and understanding support. These graduates could not have done it without you. Next, a sincere thank you to all the faculty and staff for your dedication and devotion to the students and the physician assistant practice. Graduates, you worked so very hard over the past two years, and now you've made it. Congratulations to you. We're so proud of you. To the class of 2020, and I cannot stress this enough, you've made it through one of the most difficult years to navigate that we have ever seen. You made it, and again, we are all so proud of you and all your accomplishments over the past two years. Your dedication and perseverance in the face of adversity has paid off, and now you're ready to face the world and all of its challenges. Your class is particularly special to me because I was also the second graduating class for my PA school, and my alma mater was Duquesne University, and I understand how vital you are to helping improve the program. You helped to shape it into what it is today and were willing to take a chance on us, believing in our abilities to give you a top-notch PA education. Your flexibility and support has really been challenged this year like no other year, and it was much appreciated. The time went very quickly, at least for me, although may have seemed unending at times for you, especially since March of 2020. I've witnessed many of you listening to a classmate and attempting to understand another's view before making a final decision. This active listening skill, along with your strong educational accomplishments, create the basis for you to become the best healthcare professional possible. You will continue to make us so proud. I would like to impart a few words of wisdom to take with you on your journal, on your journey <laughs> through the PA career. First, remember to always follow your dreams and aspirations. They will not lead you down the wrong path. Do what is important to you and what feels right to you, and everything else will follow. A wise man once told me when I was deciding to leave my business career to embark on a journey into medicine, that money and success will come from making a career out of what you love to do, because you will be good at it. Learn to trust your instinct. That's why you have it. Second, do good things. Give back to society, volunteer, care, and love. Third, listen to your patients and have empathy for them. Because of all the knowledge we gain through education, we often think we know more than patients do about themselves. As you may have already learned on your rotations, this is often not the case. Fourth, learn to forgive yourself and others. We all make mistakes, and what's important is that you take responsibility and be honest with yourself and your patients. You will gain their respect and admiration. Strive to be the best PA you know how to be. And lastly, keep a sense of humor about you. Illness and disease are tough. You have the opportunity to lift your patient's spirits and raise them to the next level in your role as a healthcare provider. Humor and playful communication strengthen our relationships by triggering positive feelings and fostering those emotional connections. Tell funny stories and jokes to your patients. It will not only help their healing, but will help your wellness too. Just don't do it right after abdominal surgery because that hurts. All right, here's one for you. Light travels faster than sound. This is why some people appear bright until you hear them speak. The credit goes to Alan Dundas for that. Laughter truly is the best medicine. Finally, all the best to our graduates as you discover the world of medicine and all of its rewards. 
follow your heart and remember why you chose physician assistant as your profession. Good luck to all of you on the boards and all of your endeavors. You're going to do wonderfully. I hope you all enjoy this lovely ceremony with special thanks to Mary Beth Culler, our program administrator extraordinaire. Thank you. Hello, physician assistant graduating class of 2020. My name is Ruth Ramsey and I am the Dean of the School of Health and Natural Sciences here at Dominican University of California. I'm here to congratulate you on your extraordinary achievement in this extraordinary year. Together we have sheltered in place, together we have Zoomed through more meetings than imaginable, and yet we have all persevered because we know that the work we do is important, because we believe the work we do is important. And because we believe in you, we could not be more proud of you. Thank you for trusting us with your education. And now, congratulations, go out, celebrate safely with your family and friends. We wish you health and happiness. Please stay in touch. Once a Dominican, always a Dominican. Again, my heartiest congratulations. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Please, please sit down. Sit down. You're too kind. I am entitled to my own virtual ceremony, right? This one in particular is filled with a lot of excitement in many homes across the country, perhaps even internationally for those who are viewing from afar. Welcome all to this very special event. President Mary Marcy, Dr. Ruth Ramsey, Dean of our School of Health and Natural Sciences, PA Program Director, Professor Carl Garuba, Administrative Powerhouse and Mom to Many, Mary Beth Kohler, guest lecturers, volunteer clinical preceptors, and of course, our graduating physician assistant class of 2020. It is an absolute pleasure to be here virtually with all of you. Graduations are actually among my most desired events to attend. Typically, they're happy occasions. People get dressed up, they show off their new stylish hair, of course, they show off the graduates. For many, it's a time to meet new bubbles across Zoom, perhaps even a chat from a parent to acknowledge the child's fabulous accomplishments. For clarification, we do know everyone here is graduating the same degree, correct? By the way, for all you parents out there, let me tell you what I told my parents when I graduated from medical school. Mom, dad, today's your day. It's your only day to have bragging rights, so go for it. Parents don't hold anything back. Full reign. Sorry, graduates, you have no say here. Parents and significant others, your belief, your encouragement and support, your countless sacrifices have paved the way for these students' success. And how about these graduates? Can I just say, this is an amazing group of students, soon to be professionals. Your physician assistant master's graduate class of 2020. Go ahead, rejoice, stand up in your living rooms, your offices, your patios, your bathtubs, wherever you might be. This cohort of new professionals deserve it. Such a pleasure to be here, to mark this special milestone in all of your professional careers. This year has been my first to have the new privilege of getting to know so many of you. Through lectures, exams, class events, and of course, the many clinical rotations, I can truly say I am impressed. Through 28 months of rigor, you have proved your strength, your perseverance, your intelligence, your flexibility, hello COVID, and if you remember what I advised you all last year at the White Coat Ceremony, you maintain your humility. And for that, I believe I speak on behalf of the entire faculty and staff. We are so very proud. Throughout the program, you've been supportive and nurturing of each other, aiming to succeed collectively and understand the value of collegiality in a profession that indeed needs teamwork. These connections undoubtedly will last you a lifetime. 
I would like to tell you a story because I feel it resonates with many of you in some ways. For me, it gave me purpose in this profession. I hope for all of you that you live your passion, that you pursue your professional goals, and that you always remain happy and proud, recognizing the unique privilege you have to care for others. Anyway, I was like most high school students, graduating, feeling very empowered, felt I did fairly well in school and felt competent with my achievements. Remember, this was just high school. I realized I could excel in any profession if I dedicated myself, but what was I to do? I liked music, always thought it might be cool to hang out at a space station as an astronaut. Being a sportscaster sounded kind of fun too. I really enjoyed talking about sports. In reality, I was all over the map. Too many interests, not enough time, or knowing what was, what was it that really drove me, where my passion was. I started at the University of California, Davis. Good school, many opportunities. I was a music major, believe it or not, but soon realized I'd never make it to the big venues. And to be realistic, my heart wasn't in it. So I continued to take my general courses, sought out opportunities down several tracks, and ultimately applied for a summer scholarship program to be a research assistant at NIH, the National Institutes of Health. At the time, they said candidates would be paired with a notable scientist in the field. Whatever that meant, it sounded appealing. The prospect of science was still very new to me, but I was willing to explore. I was fortunate enough to get the scholarship and was sent to Washington, D.C. to meet with my preceptor, my research associate. To be honest, I wasn't sure what to expect. I was excited and ultimately intrigued to meet my mentor. He was a very gentle, warm, small but energetic man, and I loved to see what he did as physician. I figured I had things to learn from this guy, and the prospect began to consume me. How was I to know that Dr. Anthony Fauci would ultimately become our nation's leading infectious disease specialist and would somehow carry the nation's task force in combating today's COVID crisis? Almost overnight, I was addicted. I wanted to emulate him to be as smart, as potent, as understanding, and as grounded as he was with his patients. Of course, his emphasis was clinical research but I could tell he had a gift with relating to patients, and I wanted it. I spent the next three months with him, following him wherever he went, no doubt, and without knowing it at the time, his influence was unmatched and gave me the strength to pursue my passion. Not only would he pave my professional career, but he would encourage me to act in my capacity and to my potential as a role model. He felt very strongly about this. So that's what I did. I dedicated myself to the field of medicine, to care for others and to somehow offer something to someone as role model. Fast forward many years, you guys were born, went to school, eventually ended up at the PA program at Dominican University. So here we are in the midst of a viral crisis. Who would have known that 2020 would bring us this? a challenge for all of us and a call for you as professionals to step up. I can guarantee you'll forever be known as a class of COVID. Don't consider it a burden, wear it with pride. You have an opportunity as new professionals, as a new generation in the field to make things right. As a graduate from medical school in 1990, in the midst of a different viral crisis, we were known as a class of AIDS. You'll notice there is a pattern with unexpected emerging diseases where we will rely on the inspiration and fresh perspective of new professionals to our field. Of course, the science, the technology, the politics, and the resources are different now. What an amazing time to be in medicine. We anticipate by the end of the year, we could be embarking on a vaccine campaign with an effective tool that will eradicate this deadly disease once and for all. Take advantage. Use your now entitled knowledge base, your technology resources, your influence as a professional, even your curbsides with colleagues and experts in the field. For those who don't know, curbside applies to a quick opinion by a professional specialty colleague 
and not food pickup. As consuming as COVID has been in all of our lives, it's not everything. You will still have patients with runny noses, swollen legs, elevated sugars, and depressed moods. You will likely continue to work tireless hours, ensuring the safety and well-being of people you just met that day. You will learn of intimate details of patients, whether you want to or not. You'll be intrigued and educated by different attitudes, cultures, religions, and languages. And you will find yourself at times laughing and crying over patients that somehow just got to you. Best part is, it's a new experience every time. What one might consider routine illness with infinite faces, varied symptoms, tolerance levels, and treatment modalities. That's why this profession never gets old. What a privilege. Your contribution is necessary and your commitment to ongoing learning and continued education is paramount. There's an old Chinese proverb that I like. It states, if you want happiness for an hour, take a nap. If you want happiness for a day, go fishing. If you want happiness for a year, inherit a fortune. But if you want happiness for a lifetime, help others in need. Again, I'd like to reiterate how proud all of us are of the graduating class of 2020. They have not only endured the difficult task of a vigorous and highly competitive PA program, but they themselves have been role models to the faculty and staff of this institution. I give tremendous credit to the administrative staff at Dominican University in upholding the highest levels of education in some of the most difficult times to teach and to learn. All of you have worked together to make the challenges of the COVID experience doable in an environment of novelty and uncertainty. Your mentors have been hard at work making what seemed impossible months ago possible, including graduation. And speaking of mentors, can I just publicly acknowledge how fabulous your program director is, Professor Carl Garuba, has been such a pleasure to work with. And from comments I hear from other students, a true gem and a very well-respected leader. We are all fortunate. I'd like to end this little chat with an experience I had with a student early in the pandemic, and you know who you are. A very young, bright, motivated, eager student was doing a clinical rotation with me in my primary care office. As per my instruction, the student was to enter a patient room, introduce themselves, ask if they would allow an initial evaluation prior to presenting the case to me. As my patients are by now so well trained, they agreed and the student began her assessment of the patient who routinely came in for blood pressure checks and medication reviews. When the student hadn't exited the patient room in 45 minutes, I became concerned. Not that she couldn't handle herself, but that patients were starting to back up in the waiting room. I quietly knocked on the door and entered. There, I found my student kneeling in front of our patient who was quite emotionally distraught. There she knelt, consoling the patient as her mother had just been intubated and placed on a ventilator due to COVID. The hospital had been locked down and no family or visitors could enter. Immediately, I was both reminded of the tragedy we currently live in, but humbled by my students' actions. Not that such a scenario would be odd in a medical office, but more that I sensed the innate goodness and desire to help at the most basic level. Medicine indeed is a science within an art. We learn from all of you just as you learn from us. That day, my role model made me proud. As a reminder to all of us in this profession, we need to be keenly aware, whether we're in the midst of our careers, close to retirement, or just starting out. We have an obligation to our patients, to our colleagues, and to our community. We must always serve those in need, be respectful and humbled by the opportunity and work our potential to be a role model in any capacity. Good luck to the class of 2020. We'll miss you very much. Thank you very much. Hello faculty, family, friends, and hello class of 2020. We did it! Woo! There it is. I can only assume that everybody is cheering right now. 
If we were in person, that totally would have killed. Anyway, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Connor Brown, and I'm the president of our graduating class of 2020. A group of some pretty amazing people. So amazing, in fact, that our cohort was voted the faculty favorite by a pretty huge margin. No surprise. But this is a group of people who, in my opinion, as PA students, has been through a lot. The 2018 wildfires, power outages, numerous faculty changes, numerous program changes, being kicked out of our classroom in Albertus Magnus by the class of 2021, only to be put in the library, which I guess could be seen as a positive, but we lost those awesome chairs. <laughs> the 2019 wildfires, more power outages, and of course, all of our personal favorites, the COVID-19 pandemic, which brought with it its own slew of challenges and issues. We went through these together and probably more that I'm missing as a class together. And that's not even including all of our own personal struggles and challenges. And yet here we all are, we made it. But we had some pretty awesome memories as well. And thinking about all the bright futures that we have ahead of us had me reminiscing on some of those great memories that we had, like Professor Sinrod, his interesting lawyer stories and that awesome party we threw at the end of the first semester, or pharmacology made easy, I guess I should say easier, with Professor T and his dog Blossom, Professor Maldonado announcing to my classmates who I had known for all of three weeks that I was going through male pattern baldness during a demonstration of the hair, skin, and nails physical exam. All of Cody's lectures, including our discussions on gouch and the sugars, Ramos's infamous sleep well at the end of one of his crazy ER stories, Mary Beth's comforting voice before tests and Oski's, Carl always with a positive energy, but mostly candy to liven our spirits, our fundraiser at the Mayflower, the Penguin Pantry, tabling on campus to spread the word about our program and PAs, Joe Gilboy's lectures and all of the things that he told us not to do before we took the pants, which we definitely didn't do. You guys know what I'm talking about. Things like starting new relationships, ending serious long-term ones, getting married, having kids, getting new pets, those types of things. All of these memories and so many more. I'm very grateful to have shared this experience with a cohort of filled with such amazing people. People who will go on to accomplish great things in medicine and represent our profession to the fullest. So to you I say, congratulations. And remember, if you're lost and you're on the boards, just know that the rest of us are right there with you. Cheers. Kalisha Abesakara. Sarah Abul Jude. I want to thank my family for their endless support and everybody that I have met along the way that has believed in me and stood in my corner. I love you guys so much. Cecilia Alvarez. Dahlia Azizi. Kimia Barra Darren. Sophia Beck. Emily Bells. Connor Brown. Michael Burns. I wanted to take this time to thank our faculty, my classmates, and most of all my family for all the sacrifices and dedication they've made throughout PA school. Hannah Fannin. 
thank you to God, my family, my fiance Paul, my friends, and faculty and staff here at Dominican University for supporting me through my journey as a PA student. Thank you. Cynthia Galvez. Thank you, family and friends, for all the support throughout my PA journey. I really appreciate it. I just want to say congratulations to my fellow peers of Class of 2020. We did it. Dustin Gottfeld. I want to thank my family, my parents especially, uh, of course my uh, best friend and fiance Sarah, and uh, can't wait to celebrate and of course start practicing medicine. Alyssa Ginto. Roxana Infante. All right, we did it. Congrats, everybody. Holly Kaliuta. Blossom Kim. Nicole Kimball. Jennifer Lau. Danny Lee. Diana McCafferty. Satanique Melkonian Karpenko. Tammy Wynn. Annie Fan. Stephanie Santos. Scott Sproul. I want to thank all my friends and family for their love and support, especially my parents and my in-laws. A special thank you to my wife for allowing me to follow my dreams while raising our two sweet boys. I love you. Mona Suresh. Caitlin Sontag. I'd like to give a special thanks to my parents and my boyfriend, Henry, for all their love and support. Congrats, everybody. We did it! Albert Vu. Now it is time for our graduates to take their solemn Hippocratic Oath as they venture into the realm of patient care as a physician assistant. I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I swear to fulfill to the best of my ability and judgment this covenant. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians and PAs in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will respect the hard-won scientific gains of those physicians and PAs in whose steps I walk and gladly share such knowledge as is mine with those who are to follow. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required, avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will apply for the benefit of the sick all measures that are required. Avoiding those twin traps of overtreatment and therapeutic nihilism. I will remember that there is an art to medicine as well as science, and that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will remember that there is art to medicine as well as science. And that warmth, sympathy, and understanding may outweigh the surgeon's knife or the chemist's drug. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will not be ashamed to say, I know not, nor will I fail to call in my colleagues when the skills of another are needed for a patient's recovery. I will respect the privacy of my patients for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially, must I tread with care in matters of life and death. I will respect the privacy of my patients, 
for their problems are not disclosed to me that the world may know. Most especially must I tread with care in matters of life and death. If it is given me to save a life, all thanks. But it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. If it is given me to save a life, all thanks. But it may also be within my power to take a life. This awesome responsibility must be faced with great humbleness and awareness of my own frailty. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes these related problems if I am to care adequately for the sick. I will remember that I do not treat a fever chart, a cancerous growth, but a sick human being whose illness may affect the person's family and economic stability. My responsibility includes these related problems if I'm to care adequately for the sick. I will prevent disease wherever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will prevent disease whenever I can, for prevention is preferable to cure. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, those sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. I will remember that I remain a member of society with special obligations to all my fellow human beings, the sound of mind and body, as well as the infirm. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. If I do not violate this oath, may I enjoy life and art, respected while I live, and remembered with affection thereafter. May I always act so as to preserve the finest traditions of my calling, and may I long experience the joy of healing those who seek my help. Now, you are officially PAs. Congratulations, PA Class of 2020. Thank you all for coming to this truly special celebration. I hope to see all of our graduates back here teaching the next generation of PA. Thank you all very much.